Okay, so here we want to teach the machine a new part. And there's only a limited selection of parts programmed into the library of this machine. So what we want to do to teach a new part is go to Setup, Component Library, Modify Component Library. This is the library of parts that are programmed in the machine. The parts that do not have an asterisk, you cannot change or modify in any way. And here's all the information for those. If you scroll down, the ones with an asterisk in front are user defined and you can change those. If you want to change one of these, you need to copy it using this copy button down here and then create your own. So what I have here is a TO252 MOSFET. Voltage regulators are also usually in this size. And there's not one of those, either up here in the predefined system or the user-defined library. So what I'm going to do is click Create, type in my library name. And this is the package name. So TO-252. In the type, there's not a lot of selection you'll find. Um, the closest that I'm going to get here is the transistor. Uh, if you had devices with two rows of pins or a quad flat pack with four rows and you can do diodes and capacitors. So here we have the SOT transistor. The width of this package, you want to get these numbers from the data sheet. The average width is 6.4 millimeters. The average length is 5.5. And the height, you do not want to get the average. You want to get the minimum height so the machine knows, go, knows to go down the furthest to go pick it up. So in this case, 2.18 is the minimum height. So here we have how many pins are on the top and bottom. Well, on the top here, we have one pin, which is actually the, uh, the heat slug and we'll call it three on the bottom. Only two are being used, but it looks like there's three when you look at it. And this is the type of alignment. You're pretty much always gonna use A. Uh, the IC pitch would only come into play if you had several pins on like a, uh, an SOP or an SOIC or a quad flat pack. The vacuum sensitivity isn't really that important. You can leave it at three, uh, at 70. The nozzle, size 3, is how big it is. So 7 is the largest. This machine isn't equipped with a 7. 1 is the smallest. So from its selection of the dimensions I told it, it's suggesting a 3. The black or white nozzle is important if you can't get the image to be trained properly through the machine vision. Um, this will keep the contrast correct in the way you want it. Since my part is black, I'm going to do a black nozzle. Then you can click OK to save it, or you can train the image. So we'll click Train Image. So there's multiple ways to, to train the image or to get, get the part. You can pick it up from the circuit board that you have on there, and you have to have the PCB height correct. You can pick it up from a feeder um, if you have it in one of the feeders, and you index it, and you can choose which feeder here. Um, or you can just manually pick it up or place it in there. So what we're going to do is move the z-axis down and then turn the vacuum on manually. And then what we're going to do is physically place the part on the nozzle. So now that I've done that, I can click Train Image. And so here's the part. You want to rotate it in a way that it's going to be picked up. So you want to emulate how the angle it's going to be picked up at. So you can do that by rotating these buttons down here. And then this box up here, you want to surround the part with this box. Not getting too much, but not encroaching in on, on it. 
So here we have the light, the lighting of it. And you want to get the silver or bright spots as bright as possible. You can see we have a lot of lines and cracks. So if we were to take an image of that, you can see it's not all that great down here. So that's what this camera button does, it takes an image. And after you take an image, it'll show up here every time you do that. So we can try to get that looking a little better. And it's all about contrast. So when you think you're satisfied that it's going to be unique enough to where it won't be able to screw up the detection of the, the image or the rotation, you can click this magnifying glass here and it'll do a check. Well, it scored down here a 98%. That's pretty good. Anything above a 90 is really good. Um, you can look under here, under the, uh, the advanced parameters and the detail level here you can change of how detailed you want to get. Um, the minimum score of 70%, so we scored a 98.6%. If we scored a 68% on a pick during production, it would not register as a read, and it would discard the, the component and cause an error. Uh, the angle tolerance, it's how much the machine is going to rotate. So if I exit out of here, and I rotate this a lot, click find, it still found it. It was within the angle tolerance. And keep rotating, click it again, it did not find it. Up here it says cannot find object, no score. So depending on how this part gets picked up, and at the moment I'm not sure how this part will be picked up from the reel, um, what I'm going to want to do is take out this tolerance to, to a much higher number. So instead of plus or minus 50 degrees, I want to do a full 360 and it'll go up to a max of 200. So I'm just going to type in 200. Plus or minus 200 degrees will ensure that we have every single rotation. And you can click on advance and there's some more settings down here really don't need to look at these. Um, if you want to know more about them, you can look in the manual. Then click OK to apply those. And it's going to complain about your angle tolerance. You have it pretty large, but uh, that is what we want. There's no way for this to be associated with a symmetrical part like an SOIC um, or a quad flat pack where you want to keep it within 90 degrees if it's a quad flat pack and know which way you're picking it up. So it doesn't put it down 90 or 180 degrees off. Click yes. And so here we cannot take another image. Well, let's go ahead and uh, do another search first since we, we couldn't find it before. We click this, now it found it, 97%. And we keep on going around and around um, and it'll find it even at 180 degrees, and I found it. So the steps of the rotation you can increase here, and let's go ahead and bring it back to the original position. And since we cannot take another image, that is because we already started looking you'll have to define the region again, whether it's a circular region or a square region. So we select the square region, this window pops back up, and we can take another image. And then look for it, 98.9%. If you wanted to, if you couldn't get the lighting exactly how you wanted, you could change it in Microsoft Paint up here in the corner. You can open it up. And you can take the image, zoom it out, or not, and you want to doctor this up. So you can take a color sample of this, and then you can start drawing rectangles to make it look exactly 
like it should. And you might argue that, well, that's not what it really looks like in real life, but the machine is going to program to what looks light, not what looks dark. So we can take all of these, just make them look a little better. File, save as. This is a TO-252. Close out of that. And once we close it out, we're back here. So now that image is assigned to here, or well, we should open it up, look in the library, and look for the TO. TO252. We open that up. Now this image down here is what it's going to be compared to. And we can look for it. The score didn't really change because we were at a pretty good score anyways. That's how you would doctor up this image. And it doesn't matter that this part is dark. Uh, I told it, all I care about is what's light. So if it was programmed to be light and it's dark, it doesn't care. As long as you don't program block out the other the other contrast. So we have everything uh, everything correct here. We can change colors of different things, not much, but whatever light you have it programmed here is also going to be the light that gets used uh, during the pick. Click OK. Then we're done here also. So we can take the part off by going down and turning off the vacuum then click exit so here we have everything saved or click OK to save it and there's also there's already one in there with that name so we can overwrite it yes and this uh, TM pick delay not found, that's going to happen all the time. You can just ignore that and click OK.